Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Y'all ready to sing, brother? Uh, where you at, brother Jason? Hey, man. They're going to get a song ready for us. I'm going to make some announcements right quick. Don't forget tonight. Be here. Come bring somebody with you. Six o'clock this evening. I've got a uh, extremely important message for tonight. I say that a lot, but it's, uh, it's true. You don't want to miss tonight's service. I'm going to be dealing with apostasy in the church. Uh, when I say the church, I mean the, the big church around the world and uh, how bad it's, it's got and try to help us with that. So you don't want to miss tonight. You want to know what's going on. You know what's going on. And then uh, Wednesday, come praying. Uh, bring somebody with you. I also want to mention, uh, Brother Mike, we will be having his ordination service uh, to Amen. the gospel ministry next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And that's for everybody to come. That's uh, folks from other churches can come. And so you'll want to be a part of that. Uh, you'll be sent out by Shining Light Baptist Church. And that'll be next Sunday evening at 3 o'clock. And we got a lot more we'll say about that. So uh, don't, don't miss that, okay? All right. <coughs> Are you weary from the battle you're fighting? Cause it seems that the storm just won't break. Is there a mountain in front of you? You doubt will ever move. You wonder, can God make a way? Tell Tell me a time time. he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning, morning his mercies aren't new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty. Yep. Tell me he could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're going to find there was never a time. Never was a time when he wasn't able. Be strong in the Lord and remember to take hold of faith and stand firm. You can be confident. The Lord keeps his promises. Don't doubt. Just read through his word. Tell me a time he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies aren't new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty. He could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're going to find there was never a time. Tell me a time. He's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies aren't new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty. He could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're going to find there was never a time. Lord of God, that's right, ain't it? Amen. Yes, sir, there's been plenty of times when I wasn't what I ought to be. Uh, There's been plenty of times when I failed, but there's never been one time when he's not been what he's supposed to be. Ethan, grab me that notebook that I can bring to me right quick. Amen. Let's get our Bibles open this morning. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of First Chronicles. And I want to look at some scripture here this morning and uh, bring you the message from the Word of God. First Chronicles, uh, oh, I don't know. We'll start chapter 12, a verse I want to begin with this morning. First Chronicles chapter number 12. All right, everybody ready? Now, 
what I'm going to do this morning, I want you to listen carefully. A um, little too much, little too much monitor on this one. Um, we'll, I'll be saying some, a uh, lot of info, a lot of info I'm going to give you today. And I'm going to preach on something that's taken place in our world. Christians should know what's going on. Christians should know. The Bible said you're not in darkness, but we're in light. We're the children of light. And a Christian ought to know where he's at on God's calendar. That don't mean we're smarter than everybody else. It means we've got the Bible to guide us. And I can predict the future this morning. Not me, but reading you this book, I'm t telling you what's going to happen. Here, we're seeing the unfolding of Scripture and prophecy like I've never seen it since, since I've been saved. I'm telling you, brother, we're moving 99 miles an hour toward the Lord coming back and the Antichrist coming in. Now, I want you to look in First Chronicles chapter 12 this morning, and I want to look at a verse of scripture. I'll be giving you a bunch of other scriptures. And um, look in First Chronicles 12 and verse number 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. You see that? These men had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all the brethren were at their commandment. Now, that's, I, that, that verse says that God had some men who understood the times so they could, could tell Israel what to do. I stand in that position today. I want to preach to you this morning on something that started a long time ago and then it officially rolled out the plan in June of 2020, six months ago. I titled the message this morning, The Great Reset. Have you heard about The Great Reset? Now, we're going to talk about that for, for a little while today, and I want you to give me your undivided attention. In June of 2020, the World Economic Forum met the World Economic Forum is a group that meets in Geneva, Switzerland, where we're talking, we're talking, we ain't talking about like some little, some little rich people in the United States. We're talking about world leaders from all over the world. It's founded, headed up by a man by the name of Klaus, like Santa Claus, but it's K-K-L-A-U-S, Swab. This man's in his 80s now, but they've now rolled out the plan for a reset. Everybody here knows what reset means, right? Uh, you got a you got a hair dryer, ladies, or, or an appliance at home. Sometimes it'll be too much electricity or it'll get too hot or something. It'll click off. And when it clicks off, there's a little button on there that says reset button. And you punch it and get it going again. Now that's where they say we are at in human history. We are at the time of reset. The clock, it, it turned off. The world successfully Brought the whole, they, they brought successfully the whole world to a halt last year by stopping our economy. We're not talking about just in America. We're talking about worldwide. Now, I don't know about you. You know, I will, you know there's always some nut. When you start preaching, oh, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. People like that don't know what they're talking about. Uh, the word conspiracy is in the Bible over 10 times, and there are conspiracy. What I'm going to preach to you this morning is not conspiracy theory, it's a fact, and I'm going to give you the evidence for it. It's nobody's opinion. It's not politics or even religion right now. It's what's happening in our world. I have always believed, and I told y'all last March, I have always believed in my heart when I prayed about it, when I see when the, when the, the coronavirus hit this world, I thought, I thought within them first two weeks, I thought we're locking down our country, but they're also locking down Finland and Sweden and Germany and Poland and England and South America. I said, do you mean to tell me all of these countries just decided to do the same thing all at the same time within a few days? 
And I remember thinking, remember I told you, I said, it's like somebody up yonder bigger than we know is calling shots. And they are. And what has happened is the World Economic Forum has said this. What I've told y'all all along, and I knew in my heart that I was right. It's, it's like there is a coronavirus. It's real. People die. I, I get all that. But what they've done is they've said, now's our chance. And we're going to use this to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish for 75 years, which is reset the whole economy, redo everything, change everything, and we're going to deal with it a little bit here uh, this morning. I'm going to let you hear the leader of the World Economic Forum, Charles Charles Schwab, no relation to Charles Schwab, and introduced it. They're saying this is the fourth industrial revolution. If you, if you studied any kind of history at all, if you didn't listen at all, you heard about the Industrial Revolution, the steamship, all, all no, yeah. the first one was in the late 1760s, and that was steamship and factory, changed the world. The second one was in the late 1800s, in the early 1900s, and that's when cars were invented. That's when mass production started, elect, uh, electrical plants, steel industry. That was the second world revolution. The third one was in the 60s and 70s when computers came out and, and then uh, cars, of course, back in the third one. And uh, uh, everything became digital and, and the PC, personal computer, modern, all of that. What they're saying is now, now we are at the beginning of the fourth one. The fourth industrial revolution, listen to me carefully, involves a fusion. Fusion means putting two things together of technology physical, digital, and biological. That means this one is going to be used to transform our bodies physically, technologically, biologically, all together and create a brand new world. On June the 3rd, uh, this man, Mr. Schwab, predicted we're ready to push the button. Everything will be connected through the internet. It's getting ready to explode on society real soon. They're saying that the, the coronavirus has propelled us and give us the speed to begin the fourth industrial revolution. You can't tell me that all them countries suddenly decided to do the same thing all by themselves and still doing it Again, you can't tell me that big companies like Walmart or Home Depot can have 500 people in it all over the place, but the little girl down the street can't open her salon and fix somebody's hair. That ain't right, and that ain't fair. There's more going on here, people, than just a concern for our health. There's a lot more going on. I will now let you make sure that blue one's on and very low. You're going to hear... Cha uh, Klaus Schwab, and he's going to tell you what the, uh, the Industrial Revolution is and the Great Reset, and then you're going to hear Prince Charles, who's also in on it, and then you're going to hear some people from other countries. It's only like, like one minute, and I want you to listen to this very carefully and listen to what these people are saying. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Make sure it's on just a tad. All right, here we go. Now, it's on. Violence back to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity. That's Prince Charles. We have a unique window of opportunity. You know what that means? Now's our chance. Let's get it. Let's do it. Up just a tad. Lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is We're going to reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. That means that the environmental movement and the green peace movement, that's the two legs it stands on. The Great Reset has two legs, like I do. One of them is the environmental movement, and the other one's technology. And these will be used. you got to have somebody to be mad at and somebody to fight. So they'll say, these are our enemies. The environment's are our enemies. So let's all get together, everybody get together, and fight it. Listen to it. You've never had before and may never have a game. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. 
Now is the time to think what history Listen. would say about this crisis. And now is the time for all of us to define our own role. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. All right, you heard that. So we're not talking about conspiracy or theories. That was at the meeting of the World Economic Forum. You can get it if you got time to fool with it. See the whole thing. There are plans in place right now to reset our whole world. And eventually, these are some of their goals. Now, this may not happen this year, next year, the year after, but these are some of their goals. Abolish private property, which means... You don't own your land. Well, that's already like it in some places. They'll say, here's their saying, you're going to own nothing and be happy about it. They're going to own everything and be happier. But the Lord's going to destroy it all. Number two, stop private transportation. Does it just sound like big cities and stuff to you? Everybody ride the bus. Everybody ride a bicycle. Everybody, we got to get rid of it. We don't want to pollute the air. God forbid that we would harm, even though they fly around in private jets using more fuel than all of us use put together in a year. That crowd does. Number three, the rules don't apply to them, see. They stop, they are to stop any contrary content. That means anything on the internet, anything on whatever them other things are, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that. Anything that goes against this plan will be stopped and censored. That's why I tell people, you better get it while you can. You better learn your Bible now. The time may come and probably will come if Jesus don't come back that uh, our church will not be allowed to broadcast on YouTube because of what we believe. It's coming. It's coming. And we've seen it in the past few weeks go 90 miles an hour. Yes, here we go. Didn't you hear that Chuck Schumer guy saying, now's our chance, we're going to change the world? Didn't you hear uh, Joe say, build back better? That's their slogan. Build back better means change everything. And uh, uh, people ask me, that, that's my, I'm going to say that out of the way. People ask me the other day, what do you think about them rights? Like, I think the same thing about them rights as I did the other rights. Same thing. And anybody who breaks the law, even if you burn somebody's building down, if a fence is there and the cops are there and you push it over, you ought to be shot. They ought to shoot you. Right? Some of y'all are a little squeamish there. But they shot the first five people come in, the rest of them turn around and went home. Amen. If a, if a mob's surrounding your house, you wouldn't want to say, now, well, we better open the door because we don't want to offend nobody. Uh, and uh, I, I'm telling you, buddy, we're in a mess. We are in a mess. Our economy has been deliberately shut down. Deliberately. There are regulations that are going to come like you ain't never seen before in your life. Fossil fuels, that's gas and oil, will be replaced by big green technology. Big green technology. That means... The pressure's coming, and the pressure, they're going to be coming after the church, especially churches like this that preach the Bible. You know what I told them? I said, listen, buddy, if we're, I told them yesterday at the bus meeting, if we're going to run them buses, we better run them. If we're going to go get kids and bring them in here and get them saved, we better do it now. Because you watch, watch, mark my word, it may not be this year or next year or the next. There are going to be so many regulations, we can't afford to buy a bus that'll pass inspection. That's how they get you. They'll say, well, you're still going to ride them buses? We'll just pass so many regulations. Every one of you buses has got to cost $80,000. We're done. We're done if that happened. Let's Jim buy us a couple. Uh, but listen, uh, they're, they're going to pass so many restrictions 
that you can't operate. They'll pass so many new green laws that you can't make no profit in your business. It's like guns. People say, well, they're not going to get my guns. Guess what? They pass laws you can't make ammunition. Tried to buy any lately? Can't get no bullets. Your gun ain't no good. I'm telling you, they got us, y'all. They got us. You say, well, Brother Danny, what are we going to do? I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to look for the one that saved me when I was 18 and told me all this going to happen and get me out of here one of these days. And until then, brother, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. They're saying, they're already saying that if you grow to a Christian college that refuses to hire homosexuals and make them a teacher, that your diploma is no good. That's where we're going soon. Christian schools, you can go if you want to, but if you refuse to hire homosexuals as your teacher, then your diploma is no good and you can't get a job nowhere. So the squeeze, the squeeze is being put on Christianity and on the Bible. That's the way it always has been. That's the way it was in the Bible. And God always had a plan of around the environment, the green agenda. Uh, it's scary, y'all. People will be required to make sacrifices that we never thought we'd make just to have a job, clothing, food. Now, all this is supposed to be in place by 2030. Global planning, scientists, economists, businessmen from every nation put limits on childbirth like China already has. You can only have two kids because they're saying now that the technology is already in place that when they make a biometric technological man and put computer chips in your body and cook up your brain so that you where it had about like 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 zombie like like superman in movies i think the devil read the bible and inspired all them hollywood movies 20 years, and we're about 20 years behind what hollywood's doing and all that stuff's going to happen and it makes, how many people, how many people you heard lately say, it's like a movie. It's like a movie. Yeah, it is. But it's real this time. It's real. Not only that, home gardens will be outlawed. Eventually, not here. We'll be one of the last places to see that. Other world part, part. And why do you want that? So you'll depend on the government for your food. God told me, they're not going to get me. I got 13 acres and I'll just grow my own food. I said, yeah, guess what? If you don't pay your taxes, they'll take your land. And if you don't cooperate and you don't have the mark, eventually you, you can't have, cut your power off if you refuse. They're saying in other countries right now, if you refuse to take the vaccine, that you could be prosecuted. That's head, we're headed that way. Now, I'm not going to get into the vaccine much this morning. You, that's between you and the Lord. Uh, the Christian faith will be suppressed. And we will be on a cashless society. That way the government controls all the transactions and knows what you make. You can't know no cash deals over here and over here and over there. We'll be the last. Thank God we'll be the last. Uh, but uh, we'll be completely changed the way businesses are evaluated. Now listen. They want to completely change the way businesses are evaluated. Your business won't be evaluated on just profit or how good your services are, but by a bunch of left-wing goals. Like, how did you clean the environment while you're working? Or what did you do that profited the big goals? Our economy is in that shape. Don't you think it's kind of weird that there was a thing in 2019, a year and a few months ago, called Event 201, which Bill Gates produced? And it was about a worldwide pandemic, a virus, and how would we react to it? That was in 2019. That just an accident? Are y'all, are you awake? Oh my Lord. The world, they say at an economic forum years ago, the world was divided into 10 sections, 10 geographical parts. Part one, two, three, four, the whole world. Isn't it odd that Daniel chapter two says when the Antichrist reigns on this earth, he'll reign with 10 kings and 10 kingdoms. Lord, that makes my feet want to jump up and down. We are seeing it. 
Is it scary? Yes. Is it exciting? Yes. God let us live right now in this day on purpose. Lord, Lord, let little old Danny Castle live in this generation that I can herald, that I can lift up my voice like a trumpet and warn the people of what's coming. You say, oh, they're not going to stop all religion. I didn't say stop all religion. State churches that are approved by the government can still operate. This ain't a state church, and it sure ain't approved by the government. The new vice president said that our people like us are, are disseminators of hate. That's her description of us. And don't sit there for a minute and think they wouldn't shut them doors back there. And if they had to, you know, they believe in freedom of speech. So you get in power, then you lose your freedom of speech. Amen. We believe everybody's got freedom of speech. I believe you ought to be able to say what you want to about anybody you want to. Freedom of speech, right? All right. Every country worldwide is going to be involved in this. Gene editing is a part of their plan. That means working in your body. Tell you this, I, I, I almost laughed when I, when I read this, but they honestly believe that the first child has already been born in the world right now today that can live to be a 1,000. They say just as soon as this explodes on the population, we'll be able to eradicate disease. I've heard that before, ain't you? Yeah, whatever. They think they will. Son, you talk about sick, buddy. In that tribulation, there are going to be sores and bulls and stuff break out on people like this world ain't never seen. Sun going to burn seven times hotter than it is right now. You talk about rough. If it's 90 degrees, seven, nine, six, 630 degrees, try that for a day or two. Uh, uh, during the great tribulation, ladies and gentlemen, that is their plan to conquer death. It's always been man's plan. Man's plan is we'll live like I want to. We'll be homosexual. We'll be adulterers. We'll get drunk. We'll do whatever we want to. God, you stay out of it, and we're still going to conquer the world's problems and never get sick and have utopia on earth. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. The government restrictions will be so bad that what you can and can't do, who you can hire, who you can't fire, and it'll all be done by legislating, legislation. You know what they discovered? They discovered this year, they said, oh my goodness, in China or somewhere, they said, pollution is down. Woo! Our God, the environment, has done better during this. It's actually better that people stay and work at home. It's actually better that the kids don't go to school. Are you starting to catch on? You got to, you think for yourself? So if the world economic forum goal is to keep the environment clean. Wonder what would keep it clean. Everybody stay home, quit driving cars. Get rid of gas. Get rid of oil. 80% of the new jobs they plan will be all digital and all remote. The stage is set to implement the fourth and Technology will reshape humanity, the new global civilization. And Apple, Google, all these, all these big Microsoft, all these are a part of this plan. It's going to explode onto us. They say this summer. Now, I don't know about all that. I don't claim to predict the future. It may be, it may be many years before a lot of it. We got some people that are fight back, thank God. So it may be years that we may have left. But the Bible said there are certain men crept in unawares, godly men before of old ordained to this condemnation. All religions must combine and converge with a Pope and his green agenda at the very top. The goal, they will not stop at becoming a part of the world around us. Listen, they will not stop at just everybody blending with the world. Technology must become a part of us. In our bodies, envelop us. Embed itself within us. Smartphones are an extension of us and are to prepare us for what's coming. You got a smartphone? That's an extension right in your hand. You're already hooked up to the whole world system. All they got to do is put it inside you, inside your body. Designer babies. You can tell somebody what kind of child you would like. It's IQ, uh, everything, what you want it to look like. Human biology, DNA. The altar, the building blocks of life.
They are saying they're going to converge body, brain, and technology in biotech, digital, human advancement and make us faultless. And that way people won't fight. Nobody will have a bad temper. Whatever you can, is wrong with us, we can fix. They're trying to build heaven without God. Just like Genesis 11 in the Tower of Babel. Same thing. Now look, here's what I'm going to say and I'm through. In closing, three things. What does this say to us? Brother Danny, help me understand the times. Number one, you know from this that the stage is being set for the Antichrist to come unto this world. Many of you may not even know who the Antichrist is. Anti, opposite, like antifreeze. Keeps it. Antichrist. He's the devil in the flesh. He's going to be a one man. Like, like the other day, we, we've seen it. I, I think he mentioned something about Sunday school. Democrats fight, Republicans fight. That's just in the United States. All over the world, people's fighting. You know what they want? A leader. Somebody solve our problems. Somebody get us out of this mess. Somebody help us. And that man is coming, folks. He's Satan in flesh. The Bible calls him the son of perdition. There's only one man in the Bible called the son of perdition. That is Judas Iscariot. And Judas was right there beside the Lord while he was here on earth. And he walked beside the Lord right here on this earth. And he betrayed him. And the Bible said that when Judas... Uh, when they found that out, he went out and hanged himself and he went to his own place. Don't say he went to hell. He said he went to his own place. Nobody has not said about nobody else beside Judas Iscariot. So Judas has a special place. We know it as the bottomless pit there in Revelation chapter 7, 8, and 9. During the tribulation, there will be, I'm giving my, my thoughts right now. I, I may be not exactly right on all of this, so some of this is my thought. I believe that the world's going to keep getting progressively, progressively, more and more and more and more worse. You say, our people will never stand for that. They'll stand up and fight. They will for a while. But after a while, when you start taking food and you start taking transportation and you start, you'd be surprised people just bow down and say, whatever you say, we'll do it. Before you, before you get too mouthy, you better ask yourself the question, am I willing to do that if it happens before we leave? Now, we know that during the tribulation, all that's got to happen for all this to hit, hit, hit full scale is an emergency. One big emergency right now will get the world ready for a one world government. And guess what? They is a big emergency a fixing to happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, when we leave out of here and the Lord comes back and they're, they're, there's going to step out a man on the scene and brother, he, uh, there, there's somebody calling shot. Do you know there's people who believe the Antichrist is alive in the world right now? But he can't be revealed yet because he that led us in the way, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, said he, Holy Spirit, the one that's preventing the Antichrist from coming is in the way. And when he's taken out, you say, the Holy Spirit can't be taken out. Well, you need to read your Bible. He's taken out the same opposite way as he came on Acts chapter 2. He's omnipresent, obviously, but he came for a special work in Acts chapter 2. He leaves that special work in, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. And he takes it out, and when he's gone, the world will go crazy. Strong delusion will be sent. A man's going to step out and say, look, everybody quit fighting. I've got the answer, but we've got diseases. Bam, you're healed. Do everything I want you to and you won't get sick. And it works. And all the world wonders after the beast. And he has ten divided up in the world into ten kingdoms, which he is ruler over. And ten kings help him rule the world and them ten kings ain't completely all human. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Now, you'll have to correct me, preacher, if I get some of this wrong. But uh, Daniel chapter 2, the Bible said those 10 kings, represented by them toes on that beast, it said those 10 kings will mingle themselves with the seed of men. What in the world does that mean? Somebody explain it to me. 10 kings mingle themselves. Does that mean they have a wife and get married? Everybody does that. There's something different about these 10 kings. There's something different about these guys. Genesis 6, sons of God, daughters of men. So they're going to mingle their seed. They don't have a soul. They're supernatural. 
with a with a, with a, with, a, with with women, and they are iron mixed with clay. You know what we're made out of? Clay. You know what computers are made of? Iron, metal. I, I, they they beat it into little bitty pieces and they stretch it. And when you get something inside your body that makes your brain, your brain's the internet. They're already doing it. T check out Elon Musk. They say that they're putting something in your skull that will make you a walking internet. You'll know everything about everything and you cease to be normal and that's iron and clay mixing. And then the Bible said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom that'll never be destroyed. That's when Jesus comes in the millennium. I'm telling you, brother, things are fixing to pick up. Equality is the outcome uh, of this thing. The Bible is hate literature. Hey, all of y'all heard what's going to happen in May. Alien disclosure. Wow. Of all times, the government's finally going to tell the truth about the aliens they've been hiding for 60 years. They're finally going to tell the truth in May, but I doubt seriously if they truth. Listen, brother, if they come out, if they come out with a one world government and, a, and putting mark chips in people and all of a sudden they're on TV and there's aliens and they've created us here 20 million years ago and we, they come to check on us and that's why you see UFOs in the sky. I'm telling you, you better get your bills paid and your heart right. Ask your wife to forgive you. But we're leaving. That's in May. That's in May. Y'all, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it is or not. That's what they're saying, 180 days. They said the coronavirus made it necessary that the government disclose, that means let you in on, what they've known about UFOs all these years. You say, Brother Danny, you, you don't believe in UFOs. Yeah, if... Unless you're, unless you're mentally sick, you do too. You're brainwashed by the world or something wrong with you. You ain't paying attention, brother. They got them on video. That <laughs> don't mean nothing, does it? I know that's what you're thinking. The stage is being set for the Antichrist. You will not buy or sell without the heart during that time. There's 18 types of the Antichrist in the Bible. Zechariah, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, uh, Judas, and the, and the spirit of Judas will come up out of that pit and possess the body of the Antichrist. So the last three and a half years of tribulation, he's going to sit in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, head for the hills, and the Jews are going to run for, for mercy and for help from God, and the Lord's going to whip them, and it's a time of Jacob's trouble, and that's what the tribulation is called. All right, second thing I want to say in closing is the world is not getting better. Whenever I preach like this, somebody says, oh, it's so much doom and gloom. Well, stick your head in the sand if you want to. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. You might as well just face facts, people. This world ain't getting better. Now, God may may have a few more years to raise our kids and do what we're doing. I hope and pray. I pray every day. God, keep the doors open and shining like Baptist Church. God, let us preach. God, let us keep. Lord, I want to see my kids. I want to see my grandkids grow up and have somewhat of a life. And I hope it happens. Maybe somebody will stand up against it and it'll postpone for 20 years. Maybe this we won't live to see all this. I don't know. But I know one thing. This world ain't getting better. Herod in his day was killing babies. Pharaoh in his day was killing babies. We got people in power today that believe it's all right to kill a baby after it's born. But that's a sick generation. They aborted one little baby and it was swimming in the toilet trying to live and let it die right there in that water. You think God's going to bless this country? No, we are under the judgment of God Almighty. I'm telling you, brother, uh, we're, we're, this is the kind of people that's running the world. Build back worse. That's what's coming, brother. The world ain't getting better. Amen. I heard them saying Asheville the other day. On the news, I was trying to find the snow, see if the snow's coming, and they said on Asheville news, they said Asheville has suddenly had this violent crime surge in the last. We don't understand it. I said, you're reprobate mind if you don't understand it. I said, I know exactly why Asheville's got problems like they got. When I first got saved, I used to go to Iceville all the time. What a bunch of old country people and grandmas wore checkered dresses down to here and people loved the Lord. You, about everybody you met was saved. Go to Iceville now. But you'd think you took a wrong, wrong turn and wound up in Frisco. 
I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he said, he said, Asheville has a way higher crime rate than a city proportionate to its size. Well, we know, listen, sin's progressive. You let one sin in, other sins come in. Brother, it's all hell's gonna break loose on this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, there now, now in our country today, a boy, a teenage boy, can go to school and say, I, I feel like I'm a girl, and go in the girls' locker room. They're all taking shit. Listen, if I had done that when I was in school, every boy in the class would have felt like a girl. <laughs> really? That's insanity. That's insanity. And you know what? People say, oh, Brother Danny, you're too, you're, you're, that's insanity. We've lost our minds in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, evil has become good and good has become evil. Lastly, I'll say this and I'm through. Here's what we need to know. Here's the good news. The future is right for the child of God. Glory to God, we got a happy look. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of gloom. I'm sitting up here saying, hallelujah, people. I will live for the Lord till he comes. And then, buddy, it's all over but the shouting. Our future is bright. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Just as God got the children of Israel out of Egypt's bondage when they cried, just as God got Lazarus out of the tomb and the Lord said, come forth, just as sure as God got Daniel out of that lion's den when the, when the lions were after him, just as sure as the Lord was in the Hebrew fire with the Hebrew children, just as sure as uh, the Lord did those things in the Bible, as the Bible said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm telling you I've got a bright future. I'm telling you there's somebody coming after us. There's somebody saying I'm not going to leave my children in Egypt. I'm not going to leave them in the lion's den. I'm not going to leave them in the fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you he's coming one of these blessed glorious days. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51, he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Up comes Grandma, up comes Papa. Their body will be put back together. They'll come out of the grave. When he comes, he's going to bring their souls with him. Soul and body meet in the air. They get their new body same time we get our new body. They rise first because they got a six-foot head start on us. But we're all going to be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Up from the quiet valleys, up from the sunny hillsides over in the country, up from the village burial grounds out in the far countries, up from the depths of the sea, up from the distant battlefields, up from the jungles of India, up from the swamps of Africa, up from the islands of the sea, up a radiant host shall come forth and we up from shining light Baptist church, bam, brother. Just like that, he's coming, he's coming. Our future is bright today. Our future is bright. Maybe you're walking down the street. Bam! Here comes the Lord. Maybe you'll be driving to work. Listen to your Christian music. Lord can better. It's like one said, one man said one time said, Two be in the field, one will be taking another left. Two be in the bed, one will be taking the other left. Two be watching movies, they'll both be left. <laughs> Not that right. But uh, listen, you better live right, buddy. Live right. Our future is bright, and the Lord's coming back. You'll be witnessing to somebody. Bam. Talking to a family member about the Lord. Bam. Worrying about your bills. Bam. We don't know, but we have the promise that He's coming. First Thessalonians five nine. For God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. The great reset. They're going to hit the button this year. All they was waiting on to see how the election went, and now everything's in place. Bam. I said a man one time, I just, I thought about this in the middle of the night. I dreamed all night, but thinking about this stuff. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, it's like a guy going down the road. And they stopped this car and said, man, you was uh, speeding there a little bit, wasn't you? And the guy said, well, yeah, I guess I was. 
And then they said, his tires are wore out and his tag's dead. Then they pull up his record and he's got, he wanted. You know what the cops say? Now's our chance. Let's get him. That they used the speeding as an opportunity to say, now we got him. Let's go ahead and get him on everything. The coronavirus is being used by the world globalist elite to say, we've got them. We've got them where we want them. And now let's make our move. You say, I don't believe that. Well, go preach, preach whatever you want to believe. We'll see, won't we? This may not happen today or tomorrow or next year. Or even by, I hope and pray God will give us a little more time. And if he does, hallelujah. And if he don't, hallelujah too. We win either way. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our eyes closed. I don't know where you stand with the Lord this morning, but if I was in your shoes, I would not wait one more day till I come and got right with God. I would not take a chance if I was you being left out or left behind. That's a dumb thing to do. That's a dumb, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to take a chance of believing a bunch of people as wicked as a devil over a book that predicts the future every time and gets it right and never misses it. You're going to take a chance like that? That's not smart. Some's already come to the altar. She's playing softly. If I was you, I'd get down on my knees and say, Lord, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be right. Lord, I want to be a witness to my family and friends. Lord, I want to have understanding of the times. You just get out of your seat and come right now. Come on, come on. Let's just get out and crowd this altar. Let's just crowd this altar this morning and say, Lord, Lord, help me to be right. Help me to do right. Oh, preacher, the Lord might not come for 10 years. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But he might come 10 minutes too. That's exactly right. You don't know. We don't know. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Heavenly Father, God, do what ought to be done. Oh, God, save lost souls, change hearts, touch people's lives this morning. Help us to be ready, no matter what comes in this world, that we can live for you and serve you and do right. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're singing this morning. So a lady, you can pray right quick. If God's speaking to your heart. You come on right now. Have thine own Is there a lady that will pray? Have thine own way. Amen. Thou art the potter. Say it now. I am the clay. You come right now. Come on right now. Amen. Got bus parents. Got bus parents in the altar this morning. Thank God. Hallelujah. I will. Say it now. Why? Are you right with God this morning? Are you right with the Lord? Are you right with the Lord? You come right now. You come right now. Everybody say it now. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Amen. Search me and try me, Master, today. Amen. Search me. Try me. Lord, and snow, Lord. Wash me just now. Sing now. As in thy presence, humbly I. Everybody, everybody, sing it one more time now. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Can you say that this morning? Can you say, Lord, have thine own way? Amen. Help me, I pray. Sing it now. Power, all power, surely is thine. Surely is thine. Touch me and heal me. Savior divine. If you want to study, look up the Great Reset. There's tons of material. I just scratched the surface. I ain't really got time to fool with that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I got to preach the Bible. And I hit that stuff as it fits in the Bible prophecy. I'm not going to spend my whole time going off on rabbit tracks. But I am going to tell you where we're at. And that's where we're at. We're at a time like we've never seen before. Don't, don't have this mentality. Ah, we've been hard time before. We'll come to, may, that might be right. I hope and pray it is. But you you got you to gotta realize it ain't never been like this. Never. Never. 
never been a time like this. God help us. You got neighbors you want to witness to? You got some sin you need to get out of your life? Good time to get it out. Live right. Read your Bible all the way through. It's still not too late to start. Stand for God in 2021. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right. All right. I hope you're clear now. I hope you're right in the Lord. Now, this will be on YouTube, I'm sure, in a day or two. I don't even know who puts out. There's two or three different people. I don't know how they even get it or put it on, but it's on. So, I mean, my goose is cooked either way. I've never told nobody to put me on YouTube. I didn't even know I was on there for years. People started writing me. Like, <laughs> I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I just preach what God gives me and let her go, and that's all I know to do. Uh, it'll be on there if you want to share it with your friends here in a day or two. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Rowan if you'll go back with me this morning. Make sure you make these folks welcome. They've been very good to me. They've been very good to me. Their church, New Testament Baptist Church down in Cape Coral, Florida. A place if you ever want to go down there with me or go. I'm beautiful. Right now, 80, about 80, ain't it? That's crazy. Uh, you want winter to feel like winter. A little snow, but I'm ready for it to get over with, aren't you? Yeah. But let's uh, let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. After this, you're at liberty to go. Y'all can go back with me. Brother Derek, you dismiss us. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock.